All right, my beautiful people. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We got done with another seven hour stream. That was really exciting, a lot of good questions, and even the stream we did uh, last night, uh, we explained how to pick option prices for all of you guys asking me. So a couple hours, go through it, you'll love it. If you're new, subscribe to the channel, stock market news, stock market updates, tutorials, everything, and I post five videos a day so it could get very annoying, be prepared. I had to tell someone to unsubscribe to me because they told me if I, they asked if I could stop but they were on the stream, I said I'm sorry, I can't. I don't wanna bug you guys but there's a lot going on in the markets, a lot of info. I encourage you to do it. You just really use the TTF notifications as you would a news app. If you go through it, you see it, you like it, click it, watch it, if not, at least just get up to date. But now what I am gonna say is you need to watch the videos. My last video, I was wrong, but I wasn't wrong. I said the market is going to gap down Monday, and it didn't gap down. It went down 400 points and came up. We talked about it. I explained every single play uh, through here and was showing. I still was able to realize $3,000 in profits, $3,100. Um, I'm still holding some puts, and I explained to people that I am bearish, but I'm not stupid. Meaning I'm not going to take, not see certain odds in my favor and not take them. And that's on the call side. And anything could happen in these markets. You got to be careful. But what I am going to say, that's why I'm making this video called, well, the stock market could bounce a thousand points tomorrow. Oh my gosh. But there is stuff that could make it go up. I want to talk about that. But also I'm telling you, that is what happened with my last video. I said the market could go down and I explained exactly what happened here. I was expecting this to happen. This is, has been happening. And so coming into the next few days, what I'm looking for is some sort of bounce, but I don't think it's gonna sustain. But this is the volatility we're seeing where we could go up 700 points in a day, be down 700, and you have to be prepared for this and learn how to strategize around this so you don't get killed with these plays. But let's talk about what happened in the stock market today. A lot went down. Um, and it was interesting. I guess the first thing I want to talk about, we talked about it a lot on stream, is Huawei. So we could pull up Apple for them. But again, if you don't know Huawei, Huawei, I'll show you the Huawei. Um, they are, this is Apple stock, and you can see kind of what happened to them today. They had a big drop. I'm going to hide my technical analysis there for you guys since you all think I'm a technical trader and I'm not. But they gapped down a lot more than anything. And then they started to come up. So this was an important play. I'm going to post another video on this later today. So you guys could, th there's a lot to talk about this and how it went down. So actually, I think I might, should I just talk about that now? I think so. Make it easier for you guys. Pretty much, lady got arrested from Huawei. But now there was a court case in China between Qualcomm and Apple. And I pretty much, they used this as an opportunity to kind of retaliate for the Huawei thing, in my opinion. But now it's pretty much saying that 15, 20% of all the iPhones in China cannot be sold anymore because it violates intellectual property from Qualcomm, another US company. So they're going back and forth with that, but that had an effect and it dropped the market and you could even see Qualcomm went up actually. This went in, it responded positively because they would benefit, it gapped up, but then kind of leveled out. And we talked about that on the stream of why these are leveling out and I posted that video understanding why stocks in, in future valuations get affected. But Apple, pretty much it was down, then all of a sudden there was like this special report that Jim Cramer got from Apple and Bloomberg that China has submitted a request with the government or the court to reconsider the ban. So they denied it at first, and then they literally said they're trying to fight it, and then it bounced. So they admitted it, and I said this on the stream, the fact that they are trying to change it in court could prove to be something material for Apple, and we might see a filing. I think we should see a filing. If this was something truly material and it did occur and they do not disclose, Apple could be liable uh, for SEC violations, in my opinion. And I, and I think it depends how material this could be, but 15% sales, that's pretty large. So that's what happened there. The next thing, crude started dropping and crude and natural gas had some stuff. It really wasn't the biggest focus of the market, but it had an effect. And watching this go down, I'm gonna watch for the next coming days because again, OPEC already happened. They had the deal 
and it went up a little bit, but now it's giving it back. This is what I was saying. Go watch why the market gapped down on Friday. And this explains everything here where the market's getting the reaction it wants for a little bit and then coughs it back up. It's not what it really wanted. So it seemed like OPEC was what we wanted. It wasn't. That's what I was expecting. It's coming right back down. $50 is a crucial level. Now, natural gas was moving and also there's more issues with Russia and stuff going on. Stuff has been boiling over there and it hasn't really been talked about too much, but Russia is another issue that I think the sanctions related to Ukraine, all the other stuff, even with some stuff happening in Syria right now, they have a specific tension and that is related to oil. So watch China, Russia, and India. India's currency went up too and that had a big effect. I'm gonna talk about that and some of the more emerging market videos so you guys can get a better understanding, but there's clearly these issues and problems happening right now. So the last thing that occurred today, and I don't know, anybody on the way, am I missing anything for today? All I have left is the, the Brexit to talk about, but it dropped again, and this time it was big. Um, one, Theresa May pretty much said they're gonna cancel the vote, or bat it's, it's a very confusing situation. But it pretty much said that the vote was supposed to be in two days for the the budget, and that's related to Italy and France, and we're going to talk about that too. But the euro dropping like this, days before they were supposed to have some sort of vote, this isn't looking good. And the fact too, it broke a level finally, and I was showing, we want to see compared to 2016, but this level now, there's only a, few, you know, a small ways away before it reaches that ultimate Brexit capitulation. And that's not good. That changed real, real estate prices in, in London fell 30% when that happened. So things are, are bad here in, Euro, in Europe or, or, or Britain and what could happen from there is big. And that is what I'm still now putting money on in relation to the trade war and the yields and the yield curve. I think it goes emerging markets, um, well yield curve, but that's later. But initially I think emerging markets are gonna cause it then you got your yield curve, and then you have, uh, I think, the pound and Brexit and what's happening here, and then oil and all that, but I think they all respond to that stuff. So what time is it now, too? There's one minute left till close. Never mind, it's closed. So last thing, too, and this is what I was looking for. I'm gonna go back to the Brexit thing, but we're here, we close. Is it selling off after hours? No. Close pretty decent, literally right above our open, right around pre-market, but we closed green. I was looking for a down Friday, down Monday. If that occurred, statistically, we would have been in store for a, f a wild week, but it didn't happen, so that could uh, ease some of the concerns and really get ready for, for some chop and I think some mix of the bounces going up a little, where it's these, not even chop and bounces, just volatility. Volatility, but I wouldn't be too surprised even if yesterday or if tomorrow, we don't get a move and it kind of hangs out and then we continue the drop or from there it could bounce. But another thing I will say, the factor that could make the market bounce is oil's getting better, the trade stuff, all that. But even in general, it seems as if coming into Christmas, less people are shorting, people are still holding, and now more people are selling premium, which means the volatility's high, the premium's there, but they're trying to take advantage and, and profit off of this. So that mixed with how much companies are shorted and whatnot, there could be a violent rally that could come out of this. That's why I'm saying I'm aiming for my calls. That's why I'm trying not to be stupid with this. Why is Tesla at 366? Huh. So that is that. And then going back now to um, the Brexit, like I'm saying, if that breaks, that'll be thing in the, or big. And the last thing now is related to France. France and Italy. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen Italy's stock market. I might make a whole video on this for you guys just because people don't understand. And France and Italy, you know, close by. Uh, but look at them since October or, or August or May. And then here's them in October. But they've been dying. This is their whole stock market. And it was doing pretty decent. It bounced, you know, it had a low in 16. But again, here's the funniest part. Italy is literally lagging Brexit. Again, Italy... When they're saying that the, the border thing and the budget with Italy and EU, why is it such a big deal? Is it a coincidence their stock market, their whole entire market looks like the chart of the pound? Probably not. They have a direct link to them as an economy and what they are. And that's why Brexit is so disruptive. And if this really spirals out of control, it could get worse, adding on to everything that's going globally. But And we saw, we saw what 
the Britain and UK issue could do to the stock market on uh, what? Brexit, when was that? June 16, right here. You know, we saw that it could have the effect and you know, it quickly rebounded it and stuff. But this type of move now with everything else we got going on, it's gonna be interesting. So that's where we're at now. The market closed up tomorrow. Be prepared for the bounce. But what I'm saying, also be prepared for a bounce to now establish your put positions if you wanted them today. Go watch the stream. We're taught, we, I literally eyeballed puts. People were asking when to buy them and I was, I was explaining, wait, and understand how you are gonna profit off this and the timing of this. The timing even for a market correction, a market crash, a yield curve to develop, is all understanding time and patience. And if you guys could get your head around that, it'll be very, very easy. Until then, the, these markets are gonna be very confusing and it's gonna look like, what the fuck? And you're like, oh, Josh, you said this or this, it's up and down, but pay attention and you'll see and watch as it develops. And that, that's how it has been the whole time. So, love you guys, stay in school. Subscribe, like the videos, let me know what questions you have so I could talk more about this. Bye.